Hello and welcome to our tutorial series on Calibri Nest. Today we are going to review how to update the Nest software, how to use the registration and finalization functions, either separately or at once, and what's the difference between these two options. Also, we are going to look into the topics of what is a project, what are the frames, and how to properly work with them. Let's start by running Calibri Nest. Sometimes you can get a pop-up that informs you that a new version of Calibri Nest is available. We recommend keeping this box checked to keep track of new versions of Calibri Nest. If you click Agree to download an update, Download Center will open where you will be able to find a link to the most recent version of Calibri Nest. Once the download is complete, you can run the installation file. Make sure that any installed instances of Calibri Nest are closed. After the Nest is up to date, let's take a look at the registration and finalization functions and what difference it makes if they are run separately. You can see raw data of a scan of a car bumper which was scanned in two scanning modes by geometry and by markers. First file consists of the proper data scanned by geometry. The second file consists of the proper data scanned by markers, and the third file consists of the data scanned by geometry, but later on you'll see that it requires some extra actions in order to be used for this project. Here's our three projects. At first glance, everything seems nice. Let's pick Calibri Industrial from the preset list. Set the resolution level, Set the maximum hole radius at 3 mm. We don't need to simplify the mesh, so I'll keep it unchecked. Let's use the preliminary cleaning and apply the settings. If I just click the start button, registration and finalization will be run at once. Holding the start button will reveal a list of options where you can run the functions consecutively. Let's look into the differences between these two approaches. Running both functions at once, first step is preliminary cleaning, which cleans off surrounding noise in a frame. Then finalization, which consists of constructing a final watertight mesh, which itself consists of filtering by size, simplification, if you choose to use them, it's all parts of the finalization process which then constructs into a final 3D model. This time I held the start button and chose to start registration without finalization, which saves me some time in case if raw data has errors that need to be taken care of and how well it cleans up the surrounding noise and what the preliminary result looks like. The panel at the bottom right corner indicates that my PC is low on RAM which reduces the number of visible frames. It's already apparent that the registration didn't go well enough. One part of the bumper didn't align properly. It happened because the bumper was scanned by geometry. Had I scanned it by markers, that wouldn't have happened. But I scanned that bumper in geometry tracking mode on purpose to demonstrate why you might want to run registration and finalization separately and what can be done about it. In other words, splitting a project and other ways of dealing with errors. The preliminary result is almost done and we are about to check the areas that misaligned. The areas that lack in captured data skewed a little bit. If that project was captured by markers, that area would most likely align well. In the bottom most status bar, we can see that finalization took about 8 minutes. A 3D model with a random name was created. Here we can see exact area which misaligned. To fix this, we need to take a look at the frames. What you capture on a handheld 3D scanners may be affected by some factors, including even sneezing which can lead to improper data capturing. If you remember that your hand jerked at some point during scanning, or you sneezed or tripped, it's better to run registration first to save your time in case you can fix something at this point. 
I ran both registration and finalization to give you an example what it can lead to. This 3D model has no use for us, thus I'm deleting it. If we take a look at the frames, we can see at which point the misalignment starts. Now we can split the project into several projects in order to fix the issue. Each frame consists of 3D data and we can keep a track of the data. If I hold shift and start scrolling down the list of frames, I will be able to see only selected frames. After a while, I will come across the frame where the misalignment originates. And here it is, the point where it exactly started. Here we can see some odd looking frames. We need to find the first frame that starts this chain of error. The 1486th frame seems to be the origin and we select all frames above it and split the project in two projects. Both projects separately looks well enough. Both projects have passed registration and are set for aligning. Overall, now we've got four separate projects. This perfectly illustrates why surfing through frames is helpful and that it gives an option of splitting a project into several pieces which can be aligned afterwards. The two projects we've got now should be registered and finalized. First 3D model is done. One of the bumpers parts. The second 3D model is done as well. It doesn't have too much data, but everything is in place. If some single frames look out of order, you can simply delete them without splitting them into another project. Here's another two projects. One of them consists of less data and the other project was scanned by markers. I'm going to register and finalize both of them. If you choose several projects and click the Start non texture button, then each project will be registered independently and you will get two separate 3D models. This option allows us to create several 3D models with same settings. To align all four of these projects into one 3D model, we need to get a 3D model of each of them. Four models in total. Without those four 3D models, we wouldn't be able to merge them into one 3D model. Also, I'm going to show you merging of projects scanned in different tracking modes. In this case by geometry and by markers. It's actually a rather simple process and is identical to the process of merging projects scanned by geometry. It's not as fast as merging projects scanned by markers because it's done semi-automatically in that mode. If you scan projects in different modes then you need to set three mutual points on each of them so the software can figure out how to properly merge the pieces of an object. The project which was scanned by markers is done. Also, if you unfold frames, you can find that each 20th frame contains color information. This setting can be changed before scanning. Once I get the 3D models, I also have the remnants of the floor and walls which the bumper leaned on. Normally, when you scan large objects, some surrounding objects will always be accidentally captured too. But if you delete all the redundant parts, like this floor, and if you delete it only from the 3D model, it will still stay in the frames. Then when you eventually merge the projects, the surrounding walls and objects will be merged into a final 3D model. That's why it's necessary to get rid of them from frames as well. Otherwise, it will mess up your final project. Now let's clean up the 3D models. Cleaning is necessary for merging. Sometimes projects that we merge aren't linear and may have unnecessary walls or objects that might obscure the main object, which can lead to inability to set mutual points. That's why now we need to delete all the redundant objects. I'm deleting them with the lasso tool, but also you can use either the marquee double side brush, which erases 
every surface underneath it, or marquee brush, which erases only a selected top surface. I've cleaned up the models and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up the frames. At times your PC might be running low on video RAM and then a little error might pop up saying that the number of visible frames has been reduced. By deleting redundant data like the floor, video RAM will free up and you will see more data than you did when it was hidden. I've cleaned up everything here. Now what we've got is clean models and frames. Now we need to merge all of them. I've got a model in each project. I select all of them holding control and now with the help of the aligning button I can merge all the projects into one. Two projects I got after splitting up the original project are already aligned, but since there still was some minor misalignment, I need to select three mutual points, as I would normally do, to align several scans together. After mutual points are selected, all parts of the bumper were properly aligned. The project that has the most data should be set as base so to merge all the rest pieces to it. Projects which have been merged into a base project are labeled with letter A. In the main panel you can see the projects that have been merged together. To add an aligned project to a base project you need to click the add to base icon. Now we've got three projects instead of four. Next let's select the project which was scanned by markers. It's the only marker project in our collection. And that's why we need to specify three mutual points on it and on the base project. I've already specified those and I will add it to base. I'm doing the exact same actions to the last project. It has aligned to base and I can add the project to it. And voila, all four projects are merged into one. This example illustrates that it does not matter which mode you are scanning in. All modes can be combined at post-processing. To get a single 3D model out of all four projects, I need to click a Start Multiple Non-Texture. This function runs the same algorithms as the regular Start Non-Texture but it treats the frames of all selected projects as if they were frames of one project. Also, if I hold that button, I can run registration and finalization separately. Again, doing that could save you some time if any of the projects need to be fixed. Multiple registration aligns all frames and multiple finalization creates a final 3D model. Yet again, you can notice that after the model has been finalized, one of the projects didn't align properly to the other three. Let's find out which one. This is exactly why Calibri Nest has an option of independent registration, to see what might go wrong. Also, you can see that the models now are marked with an asterisk, which means that they aren't usable for merging. The frames of all four projects are now linked and not independent. To re-register all these projects, we need to run registration on each of them yet again. In other words, get models not marked with an asterisk. The model was done in about 12 minutes. It was made out of 4 projects and has 8000 frames. Here it's apparent that one project misaligned. After registration I can check out the frames by selecting them starting from the first one. Here, by looking at these two lines, we can see where misalignment originated from. It's right there, in this big hole. By selecting several frames, I can trace down the starting point of the misalignment. Starting from this frame, I will split the project into two. Let's finalize the fixed project once again. Since I know that registration was successful, I don't need to run it again. And I skip right away to finalization. A new model has appeared and now I can delete the previous bad model. And let's select all the rest projects too. 
but you probably can see that the model is shown as a surface. But those models are shown as point clouds, because the nest can no longer match them by mutual points. Since all projects are already aligned, merging isn't needed. I can simply delete stray frames, change the settings if it's necessary, and get a new model. 7 minutes 6 seconds and the model is done. The regions that weren't scanned long enough lack some data and therefore a bit coarse. The final mode can be exported in one of the available four formats. STL, OBJ, PLY and WRL. If I switch the view to wireframe view, we can see the mesh. I can simplify or remesh it. Depends on what you need a 3D model for. If you wish to remesh, you need to select a model and apply the settings. Remeshing process has begun. Now let's take a look at what happened to the mesh. Remeshing is normally necessary for designers who work in applications such as 3D Max and ZBrush because it is much easier to work with a mesh that consists of an array of fine and neatly arranged polygons, which can be easily pulled or edited. The mesh has remeshed and got finer and now is built of lookalike polygons. Also, I can simplify the model. If you are an engineer, and you know an exact number of needed polygons, you can set that specific number or you can set a percentage of original number of polygons you want to reduce the number to. For instance, you can reduce the number of polygons to 60% of the original number. To see what happens to a model after a simplification, you need to set the settings and click apply. After simplifying the mesh to 60% of original number of polygons, we can see what happened to it. Now the polygons are much bigger in size. Overall resolution has stayed the same. Now all you need to do is save the model as an STL file, which can be further edited. That STL file then can be imported in any third-party software that supports STL format. Also, you can open it in Calibre Nest again to review the model. Thank you so much for following me through this video and stick up for some more tutorials on this channel. Goodbye!